Hello everyone, welcome back to Bruce's Investing Series. Today we'll be going over a, a bank's earnings today for quarter two of 2021. Before I dive, dive deep into the fundamental analysis, I would like to ask everyone to subscribe for more future content and leave a thumbs up for more, for more future videos. Before I, I unveil what the bank is, let's, let's go over my public accounts performance. Today, S&P 500 is up 0.11%, Dow Jones is up 0.12%, and NASDAQ is down 0.22%, and the overall account is down 0.115%, down $152.18, and the account value is at $101,119.45. And to unveil what this bank is, this is Bank of America's quarter two 2021 earnings. And here are some of the highlights for Bank of America. Bank of America reported it, reported an earnings per share of $1.03. This is a net income of $9.2 billion, including some of the significant items. $1.6 billion provision for credit loss benefit. What that means is they are losing less money than expected, so they're taking more of that money off the table. They also have a $2 billion positive tax adjustment related to reevaluation of the UK deferred tax asset. So what that means is I think that they're paying less taxes. That's also one of the contributions to the, to the net income. The net interest expense is $15 billion. This is the overhead cost, has declined 3% from qu quarter one of 2021. It's down $0.5 billion from the previous quarter. They also made a $0.5 billion charitable contribution to the Bank of America Foundation. And the revenue for quarter two of 2021, it's at $21.5 billion. This is a 6% decrease from quarter one 2021. The interest income was flat as low long long end rates declined. So in the year 2020, we have the shutdown due to the global health issue. The Federal Reserve, the, the Fed, they're lowering interest rate to stimulate the economy. So what, what, they, what the, the Fed usually do is, when we are in a recession or a depression, the Fed would lower the interest rate to make borrowing cheaper to stimulate more business spending. As business spend more money, it leads to higher productivity and higher performance in the U.S. economy. But when interest rate has, has declined, the banks, sure, they could get more, more loans, applicants, but their revenue, you know, it's not going to be as high as, you know, high interest rate. I mean, banks, they make money on two ways. One is they lend money to people and they make money on the interest payment from, from you know, from the, from the debtors. They also make money on investment services. And the most important thing for Bank of America is that the balance sheet is strong with a, with a capital requirement is up 11.5%. Basically, Bank of America passed the Fed test and they're able to initiate a $25 billion stock buyback program in October, in April 2021. In quarter one, in quarter two of 2021, they already bought back $4.2 billion worth of stocks. That includes repurchase to offset shares awarded under equity-based compensation plans. They also paid $1.5 billion in common dividends in quarter two of 2021. They also ex announced an expectation for a 17% increase in, in quarterly dividend to begin on quarter three of 2021. And also the, vac the vaccine has given out a lot in the U.S. This leads to faster re reopening the U.S. economy. And year to day, Bank of America's consumers spent at a 22% higher than, than you know, the first quarter of 2019. The positive actually grew $119 billion versus quarter two of 2020, up 24% from quarter one of 2021. And also consumer consumer and commercial loans has grew $16 billion from quarter one of 2021. A lot of this has to do with the low interest rate. You know, right now, if you own a business, you can get a loan at a very low interest rate. You, if you want to buy a car, you can get a lower interest rate. And also the asset quality has improved. What that means is they are expecting to have less default on loans. They also expect to have more and more businesses take on take on loans because interest is so cheap right now and the debts are so cheap than what it was before the global health issue. If you look at here, the US GDP in quarter one 2020 fell 
Then we have a sharp decline in quarter two of 2020 due to the shutdown. Then the GDP rebound in quarter two of 2020 and it's been you know steadily growing back up. Then in April 2020, July 20, you know, October 2020, the US real GDP forecast, you know, expect to have a huge return from the shutdown of 2020. So as the economy, you know, gets more and more improved, the banks are going to be highly benefit from this because right now, right now, people having more money saved up than, than ever because people are receiving a lot of money from unemployment and also stimulus payment. And once, you know, the global health issue is put behind us, people will gladly go back to spending. And, and if the interest rates are, you know, low enough or not too high, people will be taking loans for cars, for houses, you know, for other things, because, you know, a lot of things are on hot demand right now, especially in cars right now. Right now, it's almost impossible to buy a brand new car because there's a chip shortage. And if you look at here for credit and debit card spending category, if you look at here in quarter two, 2021, majority of it is retail, services and food and travel and entertainment. Expect travel and entertainment and food to, you know, to go up in credit card and debit card spending because, you know, a lot of people had to put their holiday plan to their 2020 holiday plan, you know, in hiatus due to shutdown. As more and more people return to travel, return to vacation, expect spending on, on travel, entertainment, and food to go up massively. Now, if we look at here, the credit credit card day pass due trend. If we look at here, the the amount of credit card that are passed due from June 19th, from June 19th to from G, from June of 20, 2019 to June of 2021 has you know been slowly declining because last year due to the shutdown of the, of the US for, due to the global health issue people are receiving a lot of stimulus money a lot of unemployment money people are more worried about their their future so people are you know paying down their debts they're paying down the credit cards you know or spending less in credit cards therefore this is a good sign for the bank because you know as more and more people paying debts off or paying majority of their debts off the banks are at a, at a less risk of, you know, people defaulting because if a lot of people defaulting on their loans, the banks will have to write off losses. This is not good for banks and not good for investors. And they said that critical delinquency remain, remain below pre-global health issue levels as deferrals expire and balances decline. A lot of this is driven by unemployment payments and, and uh, stimulus payment. We have like, what, two stimulus payments, like one is like 1200 the other one like, is like 600 stimulus payment and therefore like if you if you look at here credit you know credit card days past to you know there are five to 29 days past you know has been slowly declining same same with all the other trends i mean especially then you know people that own the money that are past to 90 plus days even they are on a decline so i mean this is absolutely a good sign to see here and if we go down here the total loans i mean Loans have, you know, kind of flat because um, I can see for consumer side, I can see people, you know, to be, you know, not really, could possibly not take as much loans, you know, because they experience what it's like to be laid off or lose their job due to the, the shutdown. So people are more like conscious in terms of borrowing money. I can see consumer side may be kind of flat down the years down the road, but I can, oh, I can but banks, you know, they will always be making money on, you know, car loans, you know, house loans, because people will always be buying a new car or, or a new house. Now let's go to the financial results. So, so revenue has declined 6% from quarter one of 2020 to quarter two of 2021. But I think this is also just only a temporary decline. And if we look at here, the net charge off and the reserve bill, if it's in release, that's a parenthesis. So what this means is that what this means is if banks expect to lose a lot of money from loans because people are defaulting, they will put a bunch of money aside, you know, to prepare for the write-off. But what happened was that because the government's printing so much money off of stimulus, people are paying off the debt or paying off paying most of the debts off. So therefore the banks are like, okay, we're not really losing that much money like we think, so we can, you know, start taking some of those money back. So therefore, that's one of the reasons why banks, their net income has skyrocketed massively. A lot of that net income increase is because banks are taking 
more provision for losses off the table. Therefore, net income goes up. And if we go to here for liquidity here, the total asset had increased from quarter one of 2021 to quarter two of 2021. So it's not a good sign. And here's here's one one thing here. Bank of America shares, you know, per book value is at 29.89. And if we look at Bank of America stock price right now, you're paying about like, you know, roughly nine to ten dollars over than the book value. But it might sound like a higher premium than the book value, but here here's what I can justify. Banks are right now in a in a really safe place because in I mean in 2020 bank stocks are severely beaten down because there's a lot of uncertainty you know because people thought that you know what well, well, more people are getting laid off people can't afford pay the loans so therefore banks gonna have repeat the same thing what happened in 2008 with the housing housing market crash but in reality people are paying a lot of their debts down because they got so much stimulus payment from unemployment benefits and stimulus checks. So the banks are in a pretty safe place. They're authorized to raise the dividend. They're authorized to buy back stock from the Fed. So it is trading at a, at a, at a premium, and I think that premium is justified. If we look at you know the banks, banks PE ratio right now, it's at a 16.63. If we look at average S and P 500 PE ratio. I mean, the S&P 500 PE ratio, as of, you know, July 9th, 2021, it's at a 37.7. Bank of America, it's at a 16.63. This is, you know, severely undervalued com compared to, you know, the overall market. And also, Bank of America, you know, it is becoming, you know, less, you know, high uncertainty. The, a lot of uncertainty is, you know, mostly gone now. So, therefore, it is, you know, you're kind of like getting a deal, in my opinion, but... Again, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research. And one of the, the most important thing to, to to look at here is that the average deposit does skyrocket fourteen percent. And what this means is that you know it's not a good sign because because people have gotten so much more you know so much money paid out to them for unemployment benefits. A lot of that money gets deposited in people's bank accounts, and also people return their work. So therefore, more and more deposits are in. The more deposit the bank receives, the better it is for the bank because how the bank works is that traditional is that you deposit your money, the bank take the money you deposit, they lend that money out to another person, and then the client will pay the money back, and you as the the, the account holder will receive some of that interest profit. That's how the bank works traditionally. So more and more more to people deposit, which means that you know more and more people that will earn more money from savings account. And if we look at net interest income, you know, has been like relatively flat in the past in the past one year. But we can see here in quarter two of 2020, quarter three of 2020, and etc. especially in the year 2020, it was hardly affected, you know, even though it was hardly affected, but a lot of investors thought banks are going to go out of business. So therefore, bank stocks were severely beaten down. But we can see that here, interest income was was hardly affected despite the shutdown, despite the fact that people are laying off. Now, the last thing I want to mention for a bank is that you got to look at the efficiency ratio. So what an efficiency ratio is, is that you take the non-interest expense divided by the revenue. Efficiency ratio shows how efficient are the are the bank managers handling overhead costs. And we can see right here, from quarter 1 2018 to quarter 2 of 2021, the efficient rate ratio has rise to 70%. The, this is indicating that, you know, the bank is very good at controlling the cost of the overhead. Therefore, they can squeeze out a lot of, a lot of the net income and profit for shareholders. And if we look at Bank of America stock, if we go seeking alpha here. If you look at Bank of America stock, if you look at the dividends here, 
The dividend yield may be low at 1.81%, but the payout ratio, it's only at 20.87%. In the path, the five-year growth rate, it's about 30%. Very impressive for, for dividend payment. This low payout ratio, I can see Bank of America down the road gradually bumping up the payout ratio, paying more money to shareholders. I can see that could be a factor on increase, causing the Bank of America stock price to go up. And if we go to JP Morgan, compare that to JP Morgan. JP Morgan, their payout ratio again, it's a 25.9%, another bank that could also raise the, their payout ratio. Personally, I like JP Morgan more than Bank of America because JP Morgan, it is, they're trying to stay competitive by innovating the business to to attract younger investors and you know to retain the younger younger account holders but i think having bank of america and, and jp morgan it's you know a very good thing to have in, in my portfolio because bank of america is not a bad company to diversify in the, in the bank industry investment but jp morgan will always remain my favorite and i think bank of america is a nice addition to have to diversify in the banking industry so guys what do you think of bank of america stock would you buy would you buy this company and and also how much of your portfolio would you like to have in bank of america and if you got any you know question concern you know feel, feel free to leave a comment in the video and um, i will i'll answer any concerns people have and you know, any questions of bank of america stock and just a warning before i i sign off this is not in financial advice this is just my opinion whatever you invest in a company Please do your own research and good luck investing everyone.